Well, it's um, a combination of uh, maybe a question and uh, some comments. I, I hope you bear with me. Uh, I will take advantage of uh, this moment to raise some, some issues. One, most of the important things have been asked or answered and, and eloquently, and, and I think, but there's something that keeps lingering on my mind. It was about the state, its effectiveness or lack of it and in its responsibilities to deliver on, on the tasks the states exist for. That's on one hand. The second is built on the examples, very good examples given by the panel. For example, when the case of uh, Ireland was given, or Portugal or Spain, or even others maybe much earlier when uh, uh, reparation also was implied or s mentioned or the support, the, the, the Marshall Plan and so on and so forth. So what is the difference here? If aid is given to Ireland, and the island is left to manage aid on its priorities, and aid going to Africa, and actually none of the African countries would be left to manage aid on their own. And, and I want to agree with uh, what uh, Dr. Gendai said uh, in one instance, it's not a problem, aid is not the problem. It's, if you will, something else that w hasn't come out in this discussion, but which speaks volumes as we discuss globalization even as a context of many things that must happen. Globalization is about interlinkages, it's about interdependence, it's how the whole world is, is closely knit, if you will. But of course, in all of this, we, we, we have other worlds that operate within. And this is what comes, brings me to the point of, of trying to understand the distinction why aid would be given to Ireland and things following that are completely different from what follows when aid is given to Africa. My conclusion, and, uh, and here uh, I don't want, I, I, I'm not one of those who would uh, given excuses for our own faults or mistakes, meaning Africans. We must really take responsibility uh, for, for everything our own. Because some of the mistakes we make or, or some of the things we suffer are self-inflicted. Others are external. So what I'm trying to say here is, and I had mentioned something earlier in my speech, there is something that characterizes some prejudices that hasn't been well explained, which I keep seeing coming up in comparison between how aid is given to Ireland and Greece and, uh, or other even Greece, by the way, yes, we shall come to that, but Portugal and Spain, and they are left, left alone to manage their situation. But in Africa, no. It's aid 
that you must pay for very heavily. Central to that being losing your own dignity and your own your ownership, if you will, over what must happen. Which leaves me to, to therefore conclude there is this situation that never ends where, no, these Africans, no matter which part of Africa, and we have agreed that uh, many parts of Africa are different, Africa is not one country, uh, it's many parts, it doesn't matter which part of Africa. The conclusion for me is, for lack of a better explanation, these are people who can't manage themselves. They must be managed. This is the conclusion. And one of, of the reasons I'm say, saying some of the things are self-inflicted is that Actually, some of us accept that. When you accept it, it's a problem self-inflicted. So what, what is that? Can, can the, the panelists give me some idea as to why there is this constant, you know, and, and which we, we, we keep, you know, glossing over and, and really not bringing out correctly. So what is it that is wrong with Africa? that we must always be dictated to, that somebody must ch chart our course, somebody must ask us, you know, we, we must be managed, and we accept it. Yes, we have accepted it, that's, that's self-inflicted. I, I will show you something else, why it is not aid, because gender was right to say it's not aid, it's something else, indeed it is something else. Let's look at another situation which does not involve aid. Something called international justice, which my country and many other countries uh, not far away from here in our region and so on, there is something that has been created in the form of international justice which does not try other people from many ways. It tries Africans. It tries African leaders. It's something that is hovering over every nation, every country of Africa, and it is, it is almost uh, turning into some kind of terror. Yes, if you say this, if you don't, you know, if you, you, you bring something that I don't agree with, you know, you might end up uh, in one of the capitals <laughs> in Europe. And this has become a thing that people have to subscribe to. I beg to absolutely disagree with this kind of notion. It, it manifests through international justice, it comes through aid, it comes through every conversation. It's as if some people were created by God differently and Africans were supposed to be the servants of these other demigods. How, how can we discuss all this minus this particular problem. And where the African intellectuals, good thinkers, who should be bringing up this matter for discussion and not only just for discussion, so that it brings about change. When you're talking about hypocrisy or double standards or kinds of things, these are real things in Africa that operate and affect people's lives. So in perpetuity, Africans, we have come to, you know, be told we must be subservient. We, there is nothing you own, there is nothing you can be able to do. Somebody must hold your hand and walk 
you through wherever and no, please, uh, I, I reject this completely. <laughs> so, democratic developmental state, fine. This is how it should be. Is it going to be with these other problems? We need to address these problems, and it is we Africans to be in the forefront to fight this particular aspect of the many problems we face. It's in the development, it's on the type, the nature of the state we, we, we develop to manage the affairs of our people, of our continent. It's in everything. Yes, but we shall address those problems that are self-inflicted. This we must address. For example, we're talking about integration. We do integration halfway, then another half that we must do gets lost somewhere. We say let's have uh, uh, free movement of goods, of people, of services, and so on. And then we, we say it in the morning, in the evening we have closed borders. <laughs> so, I mean, this is, this is self-inflicted. It's not, uh, we can't blame it on anybody else, anywhere else. It's our own problem. But there are those other external issues that come and complicate building on our weaknesses, of course, and complicate matters uh, even more for us. This is the comment I wanted to make. Uh, 